So, um, what are you cooking for us today, then? Well, it's you, mate. I could not let you down. So, the first thing is to got two beautiful wrapped ribs going on there, some baby bats. Oh, what do you think they're sourced in? Buffalo Trace. I did not miss oh, a okay. trick there, mate. I so, we, didn't even, nice... we didn't even have the conversation, did we, to uh, do a cross-promotion? No. Oh, uh, yeah. So, I've got... Um, yeah, not messing about. Actually, first of all, cheers, mate. I've not seen you in a long time. Cheers. I'm playing a bit of uh, bit of football. England's up at the moment, so we're doing all right. Good. And, uh, yeah, cheeky bit of Buffalo Trace at the same time. But it goes, you know what, it goes really well, doesn't it, with barbecue Buffalo Trace? Because as I don't know if you've caught it, well, yeah, well, yeah. it's got like some great vanilla notes, a little bit of mint to it, some quite nice spice. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's perfect for barbecue meats. And the fact that you've got it on some ribs, good choice, good choice. I don't mess about, mate. I, I actually, uh, well, I had to throw a few bottles out of the shack just so, so people can't see, you know, the light. But, yeah, you can see this. Look, is it, this is the truth, mate. You know, I like this stuff. I think it's Lovely. brilliant with barbecue. It goes really well with barbecue. Mm -hmm. Paul, before we, um, before we get, get going, just tell everybody who you are, what is you uh, do and your channel name? Yeah, so uh, my name's Paul Nyland. Uh, my, my channel name is Paul underscore Nyland. Nice and easy, nice and easy to find. Um, I'm just a, a home barbecue cook like you guys. Just like, just chilling out, having some fun. I've been doing it for about eight years now. Um, and, and just absolutely love it, mate. I've gone a bit insane in terms of the grills. Uh, I've got a few, mate, I don't know if you've seen it. I've got a a cheeky little uh, ironwood since I spoke oh, to you lovely. last as well. I know you was, um, you was thinking about buying one, wasn't you? Because we, we had a little conversation about what, what you should go for, the ironwood or the, the timberline. And, uh, yeah, you've gone with the ironwood. So, yeah, what, what made you cho choose that? Well, mate, it's the Pitmaster's Grill, isn't it? I think, that, I think the main difference, when I, I was having a look at it and I was looking around the back, if you look at the, um, the timberline, that, the vents are slightly higher up, aren't they? Because it's more of an all-rounder grill. It's an amazing grill. It's like premium grill. But the but this because it's got the down you know the downward draft system at the back, you get so much more smoke on there. We can see that, right? These are going. I know we're jumping ahead, but you can see. Well, you saw that. And look how much smoke's on those. Oh yeah, yeah. I quite they, like the shape of the, uh, the iron as well. The shape the shape's quite nice. It feels like you can get. Although, like the the, the timber's got more cubic space the the ironwoods is just a lot they are a lot nicer i think but they stack that they stack that way don't they so you yeah. see like uh you can always you can always tell so if you look at again sorry inside mine there's no middle shelf i'm i'm not messing about because i want to get i only really use that if i'm using something that i want to you know rest halfway through or when i'm cooking quite a lot of stuff if you've got like something big i've got something big on the on the kj just for you mate as well um yeah, it's not going to fit in there. How many people are you cooking for? Uh, mate, there's going to be a couple of us, but it's you. I can't let you down. I needed, I needed <laughs> to have ribs, I needed beer, I needed whiskey. It's Sizzling Saturday, mate. Was that a little pint or I saw as well? There, there is. Yeah, there's a cheeky little pint again on there. Well, uh, you your pint uh, it, it's actually empty, mate. I had a nice oh. bit of Stars and Stripes in there. It was very, very good. That's nice. Very good. Like that. That's really nice. So I need to, yeah, I need to get some more on there. And in the, so the KJ's running. Just see that there. Are you ready for this, mate? Oh, Jack's no, meat shack. Running hot. Hello. There's oh, a tomahawk that? sitting in there. There's a tomahawk. Lovely. Reverse searing, I hope. Of course. So uh, yeah, that's been smoking. I've got the, the meat is going on in the background there. So I've got about six minutes left. So depending on how, uh, how hungry you are, mate. You might see a bit of fire if you're lucky. So Love it, yeah. And, so, so tell everyone about, because um, you're one of the Barbecue Land's YouTube stars, mate. And well, you're, that's you're all down. Guy. You're a modest guy, but yeah, like obviously, you know, you know, we've um, we've done a few videos of Barbecue Land now. It must be plus the 50 plus, surely. And then um, some but of your even, ones. Even higher, than, even higher than that, I think we're in the step, step nearly... So, yeah, for, for anyone that doesn't know or anyone's watching back, so, uh, so obviously Jack and I have known each other for a while, but um, I, was, I was talking to Jack about uh, collaborating with 
a, a local barbecue company to me called Barbecue Land, and they are literally 10 minutes drive from here. And um, Jack asked me to start making some YouTube videos on them on the new Master Bill when it just came out. You know, it's actually just over a year ago. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, so for the for the new Master Bill, and um, I was I was adding them up, and I'm nearly at 25 YouTube videos already in the, in the past year. Amazing. Uh, the first, the first few, you, we all know, they're a bit rubbish, a bit stale, a uh, bit radio it personality. Takes time to find your feet, doesn't it? it takes time to find your feet, and it's, it's daunting, isn't it? I mean, the first one of these we did, we were a bit like, just sort of looking at, you know, looking at each other. We didn't really know what to say, but now, nearly 50 episodes in, we you know, can't shut us up. I know. I, I, mate, a bit gutted. It's 49. I should, should have been there for number 50, shouldn't I, really? I know. I might have to, well, I might have to get some balloons or something for next week, maybe. I don't know. You got to, mate, and it's got to be—it's got to be something gigantic. It's got to be the biggest steak you cook. <laughs> you know, like we've got, big... got tomahawks next week, I think. So yeah, tomahawks, yeah. Or yeah. your 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 mate Chef Eric, just get one of those—you know—those spider steaks that he that he makes. The... Oh, the scorpion ones, yeah. Scorpion, sorry, yeah. yeah. That thing looks a beast, doesn't it? I think that's that's a that's a three that's a that's a three rib of beef, but they just leave the centre bone. I think. He, there's a video of him doing it, so yeah. There's a great video of him going into the butcher and saying, right, I'm Chef Eric, I'm going to show you how it's done. Just yeah, give yeah. me a knife. And he just gets in there. It's brilliant. I love that guy. He's one of our heroes, isn't he? He's like top I might guy. Have to, um, I might have to uh, see if he'll come on next week, actually, for the 50th episode. Eric, if you're watching, I'll be sliding into them Let's DMs. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, so do you want a tour of the shack? I know you've seen some of it, but... Yeah, yeah. Got say, what, what's... Um, Give us a tour of the shack and then obviously tell us what's your favourite grill. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I'll, I'm going to walk out the shack. I won't get rained on, I think. I'll show you where it got started. It all started. Everyone started here, mate. That's it. A beautiful Weber, Weber kettle. Yeah. Weber kettle. Everyone started that. Yeah, that was about eight years ago. And then uh, I levelled up to this guy. I feel sorry for this guy. I'm going to give him a bit of a hug. Oh. Smoky Mountain. This is the 57. This is the big one. He's a really big grill. And no, I don't I use it enough. Man. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You want to cook yeah. a brisket, this is the grill. This yeah. is the grill. And then next to that, this. This is stealth. This is stealth. This is the Weber Q2200. Have you seen one of these? Actually, yeah, I don't want to lift one. I don't know what's going to be inside that, but... They're the travel ones. Brilliant. The ones that are meant to come off the, the stand and go camping with you. This is not like the new Traveller. This is like pre... Pre-traveller, so I've had that uh, probably about five, six years. It's brilliant. It's got these cast iron grates on it, and they're really low. So it's a gas grill, and it's really low. The cast iron grates are really low to the burners. You cook a steak on that. Honestly, it's brilliant. I know there's a few gas haters out there, but this is a very good grill. Very, very good grill. And it's brilliant no, for like chicken. Thing is with gas, people yeah hate on it, but it's convenient. It's quick, and if you know a few little tricks you can actually get some smoky flavor into your food so as, we, as hillary and i always say mate as long as you're cooking outside and you're having a good time it don't really matter what you're cooking on does it so exactly yeah so then uh yeah then after that uh what did i get i've got a furious t1 have you got one of these no i haven't i've got the little smoking cabinet though these are brilliant these are genuinely these are these are brilliant uh, Inexpensive, like what, under 150 quid. And one of the things I've got in here is the. Um, let's put this down here. This kebab accessory set for it. Uh, let me move that around. Sorry, for everybody at home, they can't really see that. You have this kebab accessory set. It's genius, mate. It's is really, the, really uh, good. Is that got like the 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 twist? The twisty skewers. The skewers, so you can twist them as you go. Yeah, it is genuinely. It's a very, very good grill. I got, I got surprised by that. So I, I come home and I come home from work. My wife said to me, I've got something for you. I'm like, right. She goes, it's not quite Father's Day, but I bought you this and, uh, you've got to, you've got to open it now. She says, I can't, I can't hold the excitement and I bought you something. You've been talking about this for a while. And yeah, she pulled it out. She pulled out the grill, she the kebab the set, the hood. Yeah. And it was like, happy Father's Day. I was like, this is brilliant. She's a um, so then after that I've got the baby Traeger that's not here at the moment uh, that's currently Richard's got that at Barbecue Land so he's going to be the Bronson, uh, selling that? that off for me on the website what's that the, the Bronson you got or 
The Bronson 20, yeah, is a very good grill. The only problem is it's a little bit too small. You kind yeah. of like, yeah, I love, I love cooking on pellets because um, it's so convenient. These ribs have been in there and I've been, you can see the grills are quite clean for a change. So I've been uh, cleaning my grills up today and those ribs have been just cooking away and doing, just doing all the hard work for me. That's what I mean. You've got convenient because you say you've got a lot of people around, you want to do ribs, but you want to do like steak as well, which requires a little bit of, you know, hands on. So yeah, the fact that you can use a bit of technology to make things easier for, you, for your cooking experience, why not? And yeah, pellets are the same. People have got their opinion on it, but you get a lot of smoky flavor into the food. And yeah, yeah, it's all about the easy life, Paul, isn't it? You know, everyone it's... now and again likes to get down and dirty with a bit of like, you know, hardcore grilling, like do something dirty style, but yeah, I like things to be nice and nice and easy on the weekends. Exactly, and you know, you, we both got little ones, and you just want to spend time. You know, you want to like have really good barbecue, but at the same time, you want to spend time with your family. And yeah. so, these, oh, I can't wait to eat these ribs. But at the same time, you know, I've seen kids today, had some fun, and that and yeah. that's what it's about. I'm getting the best of both worlds, really, with a pedic grill. Yeah, exactly, mate. And then, uh, yeah, so after that. Same the classic. You've seen this boy as as seen on uh, Jack's YouTube channel. Took it away, so that's that's a nice one. I'm a big, the meat fan of the Joe's, mate. big fan of the Kamado Joes. Oh, they're brilliant, such aren't a, they? Such a versatile grill, and you know what? They're really intuitive as well. I don't know what it is about, but whenever you go to cook on it, it always just feels like really natural, like the divide and conquer system. I love that because it means you can have dual zone cooking, and yeah, it's it's really fun to cook on. And I think they. It sounds a bit cliche about Kamado cooking, but actually, uh, I was I was talking to someone. I was I was uh, I was down the barbecue land. I was talking. There was a new customer coming in, and he was same conversation. I'm sure you, everyone out there has had the same conversation with their wife. They've got a Weber kettle, and they want to not step up to a KJ, but they want to invest in the KJ. My wife's looking at like, that's three times the price. They look at the price tag and say, "What's that for?" And I just turned around to the guy. I said, "Look." You put some big block charcoal on there. You stick some chicken in there. You let her taste the food. And then all is forgiven, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's yeah. so, so good. So, so good. The quality you know, that comes from it. And you know what, Paul? Nowadays, mate, you, you pay for what you get. You know what I mean? Like, you, you buy cheap, you buy twice. And there are, you know, not inferior, but there are cheaper ways to buy a Kamado-type grill. But yeah. obviously, you know, they do go wrong. They do, they do crack. They do break. And that's the thing that Kamado do, does is offer a really, really good warranty. I mean, a lot of the stuff is lifetime warranty on it. So, yeah, you, you can't really um, complain about that. And, yeah, they're just great. That big block charcoal gives a really nice, like, proper, like, smoky, ma like, mahogany flavour to the food. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, and I think people that you get, there's obviously, there's a lot, it's going to be a bit of a, it's going to be a good, interesting summer for charcoal brands this year, I think. There's lots of charcoal brands. Started pushing new products, trying to do different different. And one yeah. of the things, um, uh, one of the things about the big block is it adds flavour to the food. But the good news for you, because I know you like it, there's actually some big K ACH15 running in that as well. Because I've just, I think it was you that got to me and Kevin Edge. He's it, really good, isn't it? He's really good. What's that, is that the apple wood or is that the? No, the, the standard Jura stuff. The standard, yeah, the ACH15, yeah, ACH15. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean, mate. Big K, I've, I've used them, you know, I've been grilling about six, seven years now, similar to you. Um, and the depot is right in my house. I've always used it. So, yeah, it made no sense, made, you know, perfect sense when they approached me about being a brand ambassador. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's great, great stuff. And as well, I went, from, you know, I went from not trying it to now, I, I don't know, probably 100 kilos of it in, in my shed. I just, yeah, just like it, use it a lot, and it works and everything. Um, I, we didn't finish doing the tour, but you know that you know that I like cooking on the master built as well as the pellets, and that was actually quite a challenge for the, for those that have got a master built out there, um, finding the right charcoal for it. Because actually, you know, we talked about the big, big block and the big block being really good. The big block charcoal, I don't personally, I know that the KJ won't like this, but I don't think it's the best charcoal for the master built because some of the chunks are a bit too big. And yeah. even they now, in the States, they have their own charcoal now for for the master built. And they've said that yeah. the, the best pieces are like three to four inches. So actually, yeah. I'm fine moving to the big K, because you get a mixture in the bag, don't you? But you get fairly even sized pieces. And I find that burning a lot better in the master built. And it's going longer. 
Have you tried um, briquettes in the Master Bill? I've done the, the cocoa, yeah. uh, cocoa shell briquettes. The Pro Q ones are really good. Yeah, the Pro yeah. Q ones are really good. Uh, I just, uh, the smell off the end of them is, that's the only bit I don't like, but they burn really well, really clean, yeah. and they last for absolutely ages in there. Um, yeah. Australian heat beads, they a bit of a mixture. The Weber ones, they were a no go. But it's, so in here, you can see they've got obviously multiple grills going on. But I use different charcoals. So the one that uh, the one that I missed, you've seen you've seen this before. But my Pro Q Frontier V4, my my go to in that is Australian heat bead. Yeah. So I I got that from uh, my my friend Artist Barbecue, and he said when from the Smoky Mountain, I was using the Weber ones. They they had these brilliant white bag ones. It was fantastic. And then they stopped selling them because there was something dodgy in it or something like that. And you just couldn't get hold of them anymore. I was like, oh, you know, you finally found my fuel that I, that I really like. And then, uh, then I had to find something else. And then I was talking to him. And, it, you know, in the early days, there's so many great people out there. And you know lots of them as well. You know, uh, there's Christine Dow, Marcus from Countrywood Smoke, Kung Fu Barbecue. Um, there was um, Gary from Dr. Evil, Grumpy Man, Barbecue Stew. And the community is so large. All these people, you know, Phil from Love the Barbecue, loads of people out there that, that was, you know, was saying, oh, what, what's your setup? What do you use? Because um, I went all out. I've Smoky Mountain, Barbecue Guru, everything is mm. like, you know, I've gone from Weber Kettle and now I'm going to go, I'm going to cook myself something, you know, an 18-hour brisket. What do I need? I can't use these Weber briquettes anymore. And, you know, these guys are saying, well, you want to run for 24 hours, you need these Aussie heat beads. Set them up in the menu method and you kind of, you kind of have to learn as you go, don't you, to try and get that set up right, fail a few times, and then eventually over time you, you start getting them perfect. Well, that's the fun of it, isn't it, Paul? Like learning to barbecue is you get to experiment and try different things and the food, yeah, like you might not be perfect, but barbecue tastes good no matter, you know, if you're doing a couple of sausages on the grill or you're doing a massive like, brisket, they all taste nice. So uh, how's that steak coming on? Do you need to actually get that on the, on the sear? I do, mate. I'm just taking the ribs off as well. Yeah. Can you get them on the rest? I'll give you a look at those in a minute. This is the nervous time when everything's ready at once and you've got to rush around to get it all done. Yeah, is that, I honestly, I've got a, like a, a plan and uh, well, we're doing quite close to the plan. Let's have a look at these ribs while we're here. Yeah. Did you, um, did you catch us See that? making the cocktail? I did, actually. I was a bit jealous. I was a bit jealous. I wanted to try some of those. Give it, give it a try. You've got some buffalo trace. All you need is um, some sugar, lemon and thyme. You can make the little oleo stuff and, and away you go. Tell you what, though, I'll join, I've, I've got a backup, though, going at the same time. So, cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to uh, I'll make some room. I'm going to take that steak off. Give that a rest and then uh, wrap the fire up, mate. What, uh, what temperature is the grill at though now? It's pretty high anyway, wasn't it? No, it wasn't too high. So I was running it. I was running it quite low because I didn't know how long we were going to be talking for. Let me move away from that smoke. Um, so yeah, I was running at 250 degrees in Fahrenheit. I know that you love a bit of Celsius. Hey, uh, what's Fahrenheit all about? Well, it's because mate, I, I grew up from barbecue pit boys. So you know, I I, uh, I started out. Wrapping everything in bacon and, and injecting it with whiskey and, you know, using a giant knife for, like, stirring my, some butter and stuff. That, that's where it starts, isn't it? Hold on, hold on. Let me show you I this. know you, you've got an old kit, Kevin. Yeah, I know you've got one. You mean the one like that? Yes, that's the one. Yeah. So one of my one of my friends bought me one of those, and uh, I went all rusty. I don't know what I did with it. You know why? Because they they're actually they're not stainless steel. They're made out of um, like a tungsten steel. So you see that? That's like where I cut a lemon. So it, just, yeah. it does tap onto the blade. It doesn't mean they're rusty. It just they just they just oxidize a little bit. Because I, I thought that when I bought them, I, I bought these back from America, and um, I've got the meat cleaver as well, which is razor sharp. Um, but yeah, they, they just tarnish. If you cut anything like an onion or anything that's got like a bit of acidity to it, it just tarnishes the blade. But they're, they're perfectly sharp and, you know, fine to use. I'm just going to put you there for the moment if you can see me still. I want to yeah, get a yeah. heat deflector out. I'll get a heat deflector out. 
Got a nice fire going on. There you go. Here comes the fire, mate. Are you going to do a bit of, uh, bit of flambe with uh, this? No, no, John. <laughs> okay. Do you know how I learned how to cook this steak? Jack Meat Shack uh, YouTube video, mate, and you didn't do that. No. Whiskey's for drinking, mate, not for pouring in your grill. Uh, oh, I forgot to talk about this one as well. So we've got a nice little uh, uh, monolith junior commando in the background. Uh, this is great, mate. This is, uh, I actually use this. That's a little pellet tube, isn't it, where you can put the pellets directly into the grill? Honestly, it's not a gimmick. It's genuinely not a gimmick. So they have this little slot on the front here, and the tube comes out, and it slides in there, and I use my uh, Traeger pellets, and they slide in, and they drop into the firebox. The smoke's brilliant. Yeah? Yeah, someone come up with the idea, and I thought, no, oh, well, I've got to show it off, because obviously it was one of the things from one of our YouTube videos, I'll give it a go, and the flavour that comes off it is, is absolutely brilliant. Genuinely surprised. I'm not. I'm not just yeah. saying that, mate. For that. And then, uh, what else have I got? Oh yeah. So uh, we've got the Udi Koga 16 as well. This oh, is yeah, really good, mate. It's massive. I think you've got more Absolutely right, massive. Mate. And then, uh, yeah, up the top there is the Master Built 1050. You've got one of those. Well, you've got the Meat Shack Built, haven't you? 1050. You still there? Sorry, mate, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've got the, um, the Master 1050. Great, great grill. I need to actually cook something big on it. I've got, um, I've got someone aging a brisket for me, actually, at the minute. Um, Longcroft and Old have got me a stud of brisket. Oh! Hello. Thing. That was not a good idea, oh. was it? <laughs> Put it on the other side. Yeah, I'm going to do a big brisket on it soon. So, yeah, watch this space. I'll do some videos of it. But, um... So, um, just, just tell us quickly, obviously, where we can find you, your social media. Obviously, plug, plug Barbecue Land a little bit. Your videos on there are amazing. And um, I'll let you crack on with your steak. I'm a bit, I'm, I don't people are going to got a hungry mouths to feed in your house. Just say, mate, just give everybody um, a shout out. Tell, tell all people where they can find you um, and obviously where they can find Barbecue Land and your content on there. Yeah, so yeah, so you can find me uh, at Paul underscore Nyland. I mainly use Instagram now. Um, I've, I've stopped, you know, stopped being you know, able don't have enough time to do Twitter. Uh, unfortunately, I lost touch with a few really nice people I like on Twitter now. Uh, I've stopped using Facebook, so mainly on Instagram. Yeah, and if you want to check out any of the videos that I've worked with, you can see it's pretty much I've copied Jack. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you can just head over to YouTube and search for Barbecue Land and uh, you'll find all our videos over there. Um, and, yeah, and, and like you said uh, earlier, Jack, so um, I'm part of a, an extensive team for the, the guys at UK Barbecue Week. And there's a lot of people behind there doing a lot of really hard work um, from – graphics to recipes to websites and you know doing really good work to try and promote uk barbecue week and and getting people out there you know getting people cook, cooking on their grills so um it'd be nice if people when, check when out you uh, i'm not sure if it's been officially announced yet mate but uh, hold that space it's coming out uh, the announcements are coming out very soon but we, we can't now, have a sizzling. No, I, I can't do give you a sizzling Saturday announcement yet. But but um, keep yeah, look out for UK Barbecue Week on your social medias, and uh, you should see some graphics coming out soon mm -hmm. and uh, some great ideas. But like I say it's it's the whole idea of getting people out there. We cook for ten days. It's brilliant, you know. No excuses. Just say to your other half, I'm going to be cooking meat for ten days long, and then uh, have a bit of fun. Yeah. Yeah, and, and all the all the days are pretty simple to follow as well. You do quite simple stuff like pizza day, seafood day, vegetarian day. It's not complicated. So, yeah, everyone, look out for UK Barbecue Week. Get involved. Get outside. Grill. Have a nice drink with it. And uh, yeah, Paul, thanks for joining me, mate. Always welcome. Thank on you, Jack. Season Saturday. Yeah. And, um, the rest of your Saturday, buddy. And I will speak to you soon. All the best, mate. Take care. Cheers, Paul. Till Cheers. Mate. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.